Hi everyone. We'll wait for a couple of minutes till we have more people joining in. Okay, uh, I guess we can begin. Um, warm welcome to everyone and a good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session on healthy cooking uh, and the topic for today is cooking in season. So seasonal recipes is what I am going to um, show you today. Uh, before I begin the session, a couple of uh, instructions. Uh, I'll be um, uh, sh uh, showing three recipes today and uh, after each recipe we'll put in the uh, the ingredients and the method in the chat box so you can take it down take a screenshot uh, and uh, post the session we'll open up the chat box uh, where you can ask me any question related to the recipes that were shared today so uh, a warm welcome again to all of those who have joined now and uh, let me begin by introducing myself. My name is Alpha. I am a senior nutritionist with Healthify Me for over seven years and in the field of nutrition for more than 15 years. Many of you do know me, so welcome to all of you. Um, and before I start cooking, uh, let me just give you a little bit introduction on the topic today, uh, which is cooking in season. So, um, in today's world, this is kind of getting lost, the seasonal uh, cooking, because, you know, whatever you want to eat, you it is available very readily, right? Uh, I remember a couple of years back, maybe 10 years back or 15 years back, or when we were children, we, had no, we didn't have access to everything. There were only a couple of fruits, couple of vegetables which were locally available. And um, 
even um, certain delicacies, right? Whether it's sweets, uh, for example, in Diwali, we wait for Diwali to eat the laddus or the bujiyas, which is not made throughout. Or uh, if it's Christmas, we wait for certain marzipan and everything. We'll wait for Christmas and eat those. So each food uh, was consumed in a particular season and it had a lot of value and we used to wait for it. But today it's not so. Uh, everything is available readily and whatever you crave for, you get it, right? So uh, if we talk about 100 years back um, or so, um, people knew what is grown where, right? So they knew when to pick up a particular fruit, when to pick up a particular vegetable. But today, because of convenience and modern lifestyle, it's just many of you may not even know what fruit or vegetable is in season where you're currently living, right? Um, so that's because of the lifestyle that we are leading today. And uh, uh, so today I want to stress on the importance of eating in season and eating what is locally available because not only does it taste great, but it also has a lot of benefits for us, right? Uh, so in Ayurveda, this eating in season is called as Ritucharya. Now, Ritucharya uh, it means in, it just tells you what you should be eating and what particular season, right? And uh, it does have all Indian foods, but definitely the benefits are to all of you who are there year three. So we'll be stressing on that fact. And let me tell you a couple of benefits of eating in season. Number one benefit of eating in season is, uh, is related to nutrition. Foods that you eat in season are far more nutrient dense than what you don't eat in season. So uh, if you're going to eat your leafy greens in winter, it will have more vitamin A, more vitamin C, more phytochemicals than when you try to produce them or avail those in summers where you may not get as much of these vitamins, right? Similarly, oranges eaten in winters will have more vitamin C than the oranges that you will try to get it in say uh, summers where you may not even get fresh ones, but also they will not have that many nutrients, right? Um, so uh, definitely nutrition plays an important role when you eat in season. And uh, another thing is um, when you eat a fruit which is available in the season, that is the time when your body needs those nutrients. Like I just talked about oranges. Oranges are excellent sources of vitamin C. Guava, amla, excellent source of vitamin C. Uh, strawberries, great source of vitamin C. Colored peppers, broccoli, spinach, all of these are good immune fighting uh, vegetables and fruits and you get these abundantly in winter. And your body needs those in winter because they need to protect you from colds, coughs, flu, which is prevalent in the winter season. Similarly, bajra, uh, millets, other milragi, uh, dry fruits, sesame seeds, peanuts available in winter are very high in calorie, very warming foods where your body needs to protect it from the cold. So you are consuming that more in winter and you get more in winter. In summers, you get more of watermelon, more of gourds like dudhi, turai, uh, and all these because your body needs more water to protect you from sunstroke, sun damage, from dehydration, right? So very important to consume foods in season because of their nutrition. Second benefit is there are uh, fruits that are in season are uh, cheaper, right? You buy broccoli now, it probably one stem of broccoli is going to cost you 20 rupees as opposed to you trying to get that broccoli, broccoli say in April, May, June, you will pay 100 or 120 bucks for that same broccoli, right? So it's definitely much cheaper to buy it in season. Third, it is sustainable for the environment, right? Uh, so uh, how many of you go to the market to buy fruits and vegetables and just think that, okay, if you are taking an apple, if you're taking a 
pear, if you're taking a bunch of spinach, do you actually think that where has it come from or how much has it traveled before it's reached that shelf? Have you ever given a thought? Um, we are so, um, we, uh, I mean, we are so uh, impressed or we try to behave uh, as per the Western world or the developed countries that we try to grab uh, foods which are available from those countries nearby to us in our supermarkets. Uh, an apple from um, US, the gala apple or the red delicious apple looks very nice and shiny and you would pick that up as opposed to another stack which has dull looking smaller apples which have come from Kinnor or from Kashmir. How many of you do that, that you would pick up these apples and not pick up those small apples or the dull apples, thinking that these are much superior? Well, you are absolutely wrong because these apples have come from far off, have traveled an aeroplane, traveled distances and come to you. So imagine the treatment that has gone to keep those apples in good shape when they come to you. They have been coated with wax. They have been treated with chemicals, gas, so that they stay for a very long time. Whereas the ones which come locally are not treated with anything. They may not look great, but they are the ones which have traveled very less, right? So in the process, now, why is it so important that you choose foods which have traveled less? So if something is grown in your garden, suppose if you are a home farmer, and you grow something, doesn't that produce taste much better than something which you get from the supermarket? Definitely, like I have some basil, which is right here, I'm, I'm able to smell that basil so much as opposed to the basil that I would have got from the supermarket because this basil is grown right in my garden, right? So the, it packs a lot of flavor, it is not ripened using artificial means like chemicals or gases or kept in chambers and preserved, right? And it is fresher, it is tastier, it is more in nutrient, right? So, so many benefits that you can get by eating locally, by eating seasonally. And like I said, it's more sustainable for the environment. You buy from your local farmers, from your local markets, you are helping them you're helping the environment. There is lower carbon emissions, right? So, so many benefits. Now I can go on and on, but I know you guys are waiting for the recipes. So let's begin. I have three recipes for you today, all using, it's winter right now. So I'll be using winter produce and making all these three recipes. And hopefully in every season, if you have sessions, I'll be taking up more sessions with more uh, seasonal produce. So the first recipe is a soup. Uh, and the second recipe is a kebab recipe. And uh, the third recipe is a dessert recipe, very healthy, very tasty. And I am sure you guys will really love it. So let's begin our with our first recipe, which is called as green goddess soup. Uh, just those of you who have attended my salad dressings and we have made a green goddess salad dressing where I had put in tons of leafy greens and made a, a salad dressing. Similarly, in this soup, I'm going to add the best produce which we get in winter, which is the leafy green packed with antioxidants, packed with nutrients and we uh, make this soup which is tasty and which is easy to make as well. So let's begin. Uh, I have a pot here that I will, <clears throat> let me just pick it up here, probably. So I have a pot here and uh, to this I'll add some oil. Uh, you can use oil, ghee, uh, olive oil uh, because you're not cooking this a lot or local vegetable oil. So just about a spoonful of oil and uh, to this, I will add uh, two, three cloves of garlic that I have chopped roughly. Now the vegetables that I have used for uh, today's recipe is uh, uh, green onions. Uh, instead of the regular onions, I'm using uh, green onions because they are in season. Uh, I have some broccoli here. 
I have some peas, I have some spinach. So all the ingredients which you get readily in the uh, winter. Okay, so my garlic is sizzling. I'll add the uh, green onions, roughly about two uh, onions um, with the uh, leaves. So just give it a toss. Now to this, I'm adding broccoli florets, about roughly one whole um, bulb of bro broccoli or uh, uh, about two cups of broccoli. These are raw, washed. And um, along with the broccoli uh, florets, I don't throw away the stem. You can just remove the peel it off and you can cut the stem also. This is pretty edible. In fact, the broccoli stems, you can uh, you can use it um, if you have enough broccoli stems you can cut it and you uh, you can put some olive oil some salt and pepper um, and you can micro uh, air fry it or uh, bake it and you can make it make fries out of it so definitely you can use all parts of these seasonal vegetables so in goes our broccoli Along with this, I'm adding a cup of fresh green peas. Okay, and we add some uh, water or vegetable broth. So I usually, um, when you peel your vegetables, if you're buying local vegetables or organic vegetables, you're not worried about any chemicals to it. So those peels, instead of throwing them away, you can just boil a pot of water. Like every day we have salads, we have carrot, we have uh, radish, uh, cucumber peels, onion peels, potato peels, garlic, ginger. You can throw everything in a pot and boil it and that becomes your vegetable stock. It gives much more flavor to your dishes than adding plain water. So you can always keep a pot of vegetable stock ready and you can use it for your soup. So about four cups of uh, water or vegetable stock. Okay, and we cover this up and let it cook till the broccoli and the peas are soft and uh, then we can uh, puree this. So till our soup is boiling, uh, let me give you a couple of benefits of this soup. Um, leafy greens, uh, so I'm going to add some spinach to this as well as some herbs, but leafy greens usually you don't overcook them. Many of you will be boiling the leafy greens a lot. By doing so, uh, you lose a lot of vitamins in the process. So try to add in the leafy greens towards the end of the cooking process so you can get the most of those vitamins. And in fact, when you talk about benefits of leafy greens, we can call these leafy greens, whether it's spinach, methi, batua, sarsoka saag, kale, any, any leafy greens, these are called as nature's own multivitamins. So most of the vitamins and most of the minerals are present in the leafy greens. And if you are someone who hates eating leafy greens or your kids are not ready to eat the leafy greens, there are multiple ways to disguise these leafy greens and additive foods. Uh, uh, one of the greatest ways is by adding it in soups or in salad dressings. You can even puree your spinach, methi, batua, or any of the leafy greens and use instead of water to make your roti dough. And then you make green colored rotis. Uh, you can add it in rice and color your rice, right? Uh, you can add it in salads and you can add it in any vegetable towards the end. Just throw in a handful of spinach and you get the benefits of the spinach in your normal food. So uh, in winters, try and get at least one serving or one cup 
of leafy green every day, it is really going to give you all the natural vitamins that your body needs in the uh, winters. So let's put this um, for boil. Okay, so till this is boiling, let's move on to our uh, second recipe. And uh, the second recipe uh, is a kebab recipe. Now for this second recipe, um, the first one I have chosen the seasonal leafy greens. Uh, the sec base of the second recipe are the root vegetables, which are very commonly available in winters. So the two vegetables that I have taken is uh, beetroot and carrots. So this forms the base of my kebabs. Uh, again, high in iron, high in vitamin C, high in uh, vitamin A. Uh, this is excellent for the winters, for your immune system. Looks great, tastes great, and a great way to add in these vegetables, which are normally not liked by people. So this is a great way to uh, add it to your food and consume it uh, daily. So what I've done is I have boiled the beetroot. Um, so not boiled means not putting it in water and boiling it. Usually I take a cooker, uh, put water, put some, uh, put a katori or something and on top of that, put the beetroot, uh, cut it into half or full and then boil it. So it's more like a steaming. So you don't lose the vitamins in the water, then peel it and chop it. And uh, the carrots also, I have steamed it and uh, we are taking it. The reason why I am cooking these is because if I put it raw, it will leave a lot of water and then our kebabs won't be firm enough. So either you can bake it, roast it. You can roast it if you have oven at home, just uh, chop it into pieces or whole beetroot, whole carrot, put it in a foil and a little oil and you can roast it and you can then cut it into pieces and you can use it. Or like how I did it, you can steam them and you can use them. So let's take a blender. And um, another uh, nutrient uh, rich food, which usually we eat in winters a lot or our body needs because we feel hungry a lot. So we eat, a, we feel, you feel a lot of hungry. So you need some um, energy or carbohydrate rich foods. So uh, our pulses are the best bet because they keep us full and they give us the needed energy. So today uh, I'm using some kidney beans or rajma, which also I have boiled it. So this forms the base of my uh, kebabs. So I'm just putting a cup of rajma. in a blender and we'll just pulse it. Don't blend it to a puree, but just pulse it so that it's coarsely ground. A very simple recipe. I'm not adding a lot of flavors in it, but does taste very good. Empty it out. If you have a bigger food processor, you can do all of them together. The carrot, the beetroot and the rajma. Now let's pulse our uh, beetroot and carrot as well. Okay. 
Okay, and then let's pulse our carrots as well. Look at the beautiful colors on the in the pool. All right, so we have the base ingredients. Okay, now to this, um, I'll be adding um, our spices. So the spices that I have is cumin powder. So a teaspoon of cumin powder, some chaat masala, and some red chili powder. Okay, and seasonal again, another thing that I'm going to add is peanuts. It gives a lovely crunch to the kebabs. Plus it is giving us the good fats, the warmth that we need um, and some protein as well. So about two tablespoons of crushed peanuts. This is optional. You can completely avoid this. And mm, some salt. Let's mix this up. Now, typically in kebabs, uh, the binding agent used is either maida, corn flour, or probably bread, right? Bread crumbs. So, um, to make this more healthier uh, and to give each ingredient that we use will give us some benefits instead of using any of these three. What I'm going to use for binding is some besan or chana flour, uh, which I have just roasted. Uh, so just roasted on a dry roasted uh, till it leaves an aroma. So use this for binding, maybe two, three spoons as much as you need to bind it. You can use sattu, um, sattu flour or chana flour. That is also okay. So I think I may need about two spoons. All depends on how much water is there in the beetroot. Um, and the carrots. And uh, if you remember, uh, in my last talk, I said if you want the best out of vegetarian source of iron, you need to give some vitamin C so that it is readily absorbed. So to give the vitamin C, I'm adding some lemon juice. And also it complements the sweetness of the beetroot and the carrot. So the lemon juice really complements very well. And that's about it. So we mix it up together and our dough will be ready. The color is beautiful. It tastes great and highly, highly nutritious. In fact, we use this as a patty for burgers. Um, it's a great patty for as a vegetarian burger. Uh, you can use it as a snack. You can even use it to make wraps. Um, there are multiple ways that you can consume this. Okay, so it looks pretty thick. Maybe another spoon of uh, the basin I can add so that it's nice and firm. Okay, so a quick recap. Uh, boiled beetroot, boiled carrot, boiled rajma, 
just coarsely grind it together. Uh, I've added some peanuts crushed. I've added some roasted basin and some chaat masala, lemon juice, chili powder, and cumin powder. And this forms our kebab dough. So looks really pretty, right? So let's check on our soup as well. Let me check on the peas. Yeah, the peas are done and the broccoli seems to be done as well. So you can cool this down and you can put it in a mixer and grind it or alternatively, if you have a hand blender, you can blend it. So let's blend our soup. So I think it needs some more time for the broccoli. Okay, let it cook for two more minutes. The broccoli stems are still hard. Uh, till then, we can roll our uh, kebabs. I have your sesame seeds. So instead of rolling it in bread crumbs again, I'm using something more healthier to roll our kebabs in. It looks pretty, plus gives the um, needed nutrition from the sesame seeds. Again, good source of fat, good source of calcium. Do you know that about a spoonful of sesame seed gives you enough calcium for the day? So it, that much of calcium you get from these tiny seeds. So do try to include these in your diet. You can either, um, you make a chutney out of it, you can add it in sabzis, you can sprinkle on salads, or like how I'm doing it today is, you can roll your uh, kebabs in it. Okay. So just making small bite-sized ones. Um, another um, uh, or, uh, another suggestion or another variation to these kebabs is if you are someone who loves that of filling in your kebab, what you can do is you can just take the patty and uh, I have some hum, hung curd over here, just plain hung curd. Instead of putting cheese inside, um, making it more healthier by just adding a, a, a small ball of hung curd. So this is nothing but curd that I kept overnight um, in a strainer. And that's how I have the hung curd. And you roll it again. Okay. And then put it in your sesame seeds. And we'll make one more. It does stain your hands, so. Okay, so this is how you can make all the kebabs from this. You can make about 15, 20 kebabs um, easily and probably you can eat about two to three in, uh, in one serving. Okay, let me check on the soup again. Okay, at this point, I'm going to add our spinach to this. So about two cups of spinach leaves. And I'll add um, more herbs for flavor. So I'm adding basil and dill. You can skip this. You can add basil, coriander, curry leaves, dill leaves, mint leaves, whichever herbs you want. If you don't have fresh herbs, you can even add dried herbs. 
Okay, add some salt to taste. And I'm adding some um, amla. Um, so this is again this vitamin C that I'm going to add to this. Or uh, you can add lemon juice instead. And if you want a creamy soup, you can skip this and you can add some milk instead after you have uh, finished churning the soup. So currently I'm making a vegan version without adding any um, dairy. But you can always add in some um, milk to make it more creamier or if you like the uh, texture or creamier texture uh, soup, then you can add in some dairy. So that's about it. Only two minutes is what I'm going to cook my spinach till it wilts and um, then you can churn your soup. Smells amazing with the herbs. Right. Okay. So, time to serve our soup. Um, we typically at my place, we love adding coconut milk to our soup, especially the pumpkin soup, the pea soup, uh, the green soups. We love the flavor of uh, coconut milk. So, either you can add milk instead of adding cream, you can just add milk because the peas, the broccoli, is already giving a good thickness to the soup. So you can totally avoid cream, which is very high fat and uh, which is giving you the unnecessary fat. You can just add some plain milk or you can have it just like that. Uh, or uh, you can add in some coconut milk towards the end before serving. And if you're having it plain, just like this, you can add, sprinkle a little lemon. You can add in some um, seeds to it. Um, seeds like pumpkin seeds, which give a nice crunch. So you can add some pumpkin seeds. Another way to serve this soup is by adding a dollop of Greek yogurt or hung curd to this. It tastes amazing um, just by itself. This soup is great or you can have it with the bread or anything or with the beetroot kebabs. This makes a complete meal. So this is our first recipe, the green goddess soup. And let's make our kebabs now. Okay, so uh, even the kebabs, you can either make it on a tawa. Um, you can just uh, grease it with oil. So just brush it with oil and cook on both sides till golden. You can use an air fryer. I think it's a boon. Like I have stopped using a tawa now. Uh, probably anything that I used to make kebabs or fries or um, even um, stir fries, everything I have started using air fryers. Very healthy way. It becomes very crisp. And you don't need to use oil. So that if those of you who have an air fryer or would love to invest in one, I, I suggest it's, it's a boon. Um, you can make so many things without use of oil. So, or you can just 
uh, use a tawa, but don't fry it. Just brush it with oil on both sides. It's moist with the beetroot, the carrot, the water which is there. It's pretty moist, so it will not become dry. It will be nice and crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. So just brushing it with a little bit of oil, just touching my spoon. Brushing the oil on the other side as well. Let's cook it till it becomes a little golden. Even if you're a diabetic, I think last time I had a lot of questions about beetroot and diabetic. Even if you're a diabetic it's or a pre-diabetic, absolutely safe to eat this because along with the beetroots and carrots, which have, there is also uh, rajma in there, there is also basin flour. Um, and if you don't have basin, you can substitute it with oats. You can add in some oats, instant oats, which adds as a binding. So because of these, uh, these are absolutely okay to be eaten by a diabetic as well. And of course, children will love because of the color and the night and the sweet taste. Since it's cooked already, you don't really need to cook it for a very long time. Just it's, till it's little crispy and golden on the outside and our kebabs will be done. So our second recipe for the day, um, beetroot kebabs, um, beetroot carrot kebabs with rajma. Easy to make, high on nutrients, perfect for a cold winter night. Serve it either with green chutney or you can make a, a hunker dip. So just take hunker or Greek yogurt, add some lemon to it, grate some garlic to it, add some salt and some chaat masala and you can use that as a dip. So, or you can eat these kebabs with the soup. So a perfect combination for a cold winter night. Uh, and coming to our last recipe for the day, which is a dessert. Um, uh, a dessert which is healthy and which is creamy and which is something that we all love. So the dessert that I have today is by using the seasonal produce of strawberries. Uh, strawberries and desert, strawberries and chocolate go hand in hand. They just taste so great together. But most of the deserts with uh, chocolate and strawberry are filled with cream or filled with fat. Uh, so which makes it, you're tempted, but you can't eat a lot. So today I'll be showing a dessert which is made without any fat and which is which tastes great and which is very easy to make as well. So let's make our dessert. Okay, so for that, uh, I need a, a, a pan and to this, I'm going to add some milk, normal milk, uh, cow's milk, about one fourth cup. Now, um, I like the mint flavor in uh, along with chocolate and strawberries. So I'm going to add some mint leaves when the milk is heating up. This is purely optional, but this really tastes nice. Uh, and the base is dark chocolate. So this is uh, dark chocolate. Try to take chocolate, which is more than 60% of cocoa so that you get the best benefits of dark chocolate. Um, again, great in phytochemicals, antioxidants, 
great in magnesium, great for PMS, great for uh, cravings, great for uh, anxiety, keeping your mind calm. So a lot of uh, benefits that you can get from dark chocolate if used the correct way and if used the correct chocolate. So I have about half a cup of dark chocolate, which I have cut it into uh, small pieces. Okay, and our milk is boiling. So usually when we make a ganache or when you make a chocolate mousse, you usually add some cream to this. So instead of cream, I'm using regular milk, right? So to half a cup of chocolate, I'm adding one fourth cup of hot milk. And let's mix this up till the chocolate melts. We are dissolving the chocolate so that we form a ganache. I think I'll need a little more chocolate um, because the milk was a little more. When I was chopping it, I didn't really measure it. So the chocolate I'm using is 85% uh, of cocoa by Lindt. So let's mix this up. doesn't love chocolate right and we find ways to include chocolate but often we eat a whole lot of chocolate and then we feel guilty you're tempted to order some desserts but they are full of a lot of uh, fat sugar and then again it bounces you off your um, uh, journey that you are having in your fitness so definitely having some healthy recipes for desserts really help take care of those cravings and you don't feel guilty as well. Okay, so our chocolate is melted. Just a little more. And the color, once you add milk, the color of the chocolate becomes darker. Now the secret ingredient to make our mousse creamy, which usually is done by either um, whipped cream, which usually in mousses you add whipping cream or heavy cream, which is full of fat, which gives the mousse that creamy texture. Instead of that, we are using the most, I think most of you know by now the ingredient that I so often use in many of my recipes is Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt gives that tanginess to this mousse and also gives it that creamy texture which is present in a mousse. Um, so I'm adding about half a cup of Greek yogurt. Now, to those of you who don't know how to make Greek yogurt, you can either buy it, the plain uh, Greek yogurt without any flavoring. But uh, to those of you who don't know how to make Greek yogurt, Greek yogurt, the difference between curd and Greek yogurt is Greek yogurt is strained, uh, strained, the normal curd is strained till it is very thick and all the way is gone and then it is beaten up. So the what happens is it is much more creamier and it is much more uh, richer and it has got much more protein as well. So definitely Greek yogurt is something which is, which is a great addition, especially to those of you who love sweets. It is a great substitution for cream. So in fact, just 
plain greek yogurt you can add some honey to it add some fruits add some nuts and even that becomes a great dessert and if you love chocolate then of course this is the one now since i have used 85% of cocoa which is extremely bitter so this mousse will have it is not at all sweet so to sweeten it i'm just adding some raw honey to it about a spoonful and then mix it up at this point this doesn't look very thick but once you refrigerate this it will become thicker and it will reach to the mousse consistency so our mousse is ready you can flavor this you can add nuts you can add some orange zest to it some lemon zest to it you can add some coffee you can add vanilla you can add cinnamon you can flavor it however you want and if you like plain plain chocolate then this is how you will keep it so you just pour this in a bowl or a glass and then you can add some strawberries to it and then refrigerate it for 6 to 8 hours till it becomes a little firm and it is nice and creamy a great guilt free dessert that you can enjoy any time and making use of seasonal produce of strawberries um you can make this as per season right now you can use strawberries then you can you can add in oranges you can add in blueberries um in summers you can add in mangoes you can add in any fruit in fact whichever fruit uh, that you would want to have with chocolate or you can even use it as a dipping sauce for apple slices pear slices strawberries and you can eat this so um that was our third recipe for the day a uh, guilt free healthy dessert made with chocolate strawberries and greek yogurt uh, so our three recipes are done for the day uh, the green goddess soup the beetroot kebabs and our um chocolate mousse um and that brings an end to this recipe session uh moderator you can open up the chat for any questions or queries anyone has right mm. okay thank you so much uh, for those of you who have enjoyed this uh interesting to know that uh thanks for introducing me to greek yogurt we have started using it in smoothies salads baked veggies and i love all your recipes making it i'm so glad if you have made the recipes really really glad so it shouldn't be that i'm the only one who's making it do try and make it and do give your feedbacks it really uh pleases me to see that you guys are also loving the recipes uh what brand of dark chocolate would you recommend um any brand as long as it says uh 60 or 70 or 80 percent cocoa the ones that i have tried um there are a lot of brands now but there is lind there is amul uh, whichever is available to you you can try uh how many calories in one kebab um um probably if i take it uh, with beetroot and all it wouldn't be uh, depending on the size if it's a tiny one probably 30 to 40 calories depending on the size but definitely it would be within your uh, budget any suggested brand for greek yogurt well the one that i use is epigamia or i make it at home very easy to make uh, we have shared the recipe of how you can make the greek yogurt at home um so that is also a great way if you don't want to spend money instead of chocolate can we use cocoa powder uh yes you can but the color will not be the dark one if you're using cocoa powder then what you can do is take a little hot milk you can um dissolve the cocoa in it the amount of milk that you are going to use will be less because um, 
Uh, then it will be very liquidy. So yes, you can definitely use cocoa powder as well. Can we add jaggery powder? Absolutely, you can add jaggery powder as well. Is air fryer healthy to use? Well, uh, I haven't come across um, it's in very, uh, any negative comments. I've tried. I mean, it's a new uh, invention, and uh, so far I haven't seen many any negative comments as such. So. Um, don't see any uh, reason not to use it. I have found it very, very convenient for sure. Um, in fact, every day, almost every day, I've been using it for something or the other. Uh, it just uh, makes the food so much more crisper. And it's so fast that um, it really gives a different dimension to your dish. In the kebabs, can kidney beans be replaced by something else? You can avoid kidney beans or you can add in chana, you can add in moong, you can add in just basin along with the vegetables, you can add in oats, up to you can add in paneer, you can add in uh, boiled sweet potato. There are many variations you can make. Uh, uh, share some recipes of sweet potato. Sweet potato fries are great. You can cut sweet potato into strips. Uh, rub it with olive oil with your favorite spices. You can put it in your oven and bake it. You can boil sweet potato and you can use it in place of potato. Uh, you can just uh, boil sweet potato. In fact, one, another dish that I like about sweet potato is um, using it in place of potato in many kebabs. So you can use that or you can cut it into pieces, add in some lemon, chaat masala, all the masalas some coriander, chili, and you can use it as a chart. Uh, so many, many recipes you can have with uh, the same recipes as potato. In how much temperature air fry? Usually it is about 200 degrees Celsius. It works fine. Um, can you share the kebab recipe? Yes, I guess we, can, we have shared the recipe again. Uh, is this program recorded? It's there live on YouTube. So you can always go back and check it up. Um, which vegetables can be easily homegrown? Um, Shreya, any vegetable can be grown. Uh, the ones that I find very easy to grow is as per season. Currently, what I have grown is carrots, uh, basil, uh, mint, um, then uh, capsicum grow very easily. You have loads and loads of capsicum you get. Chilies are very easily grown. Um, then um, tomatoes, brinjal, these are all very easy. So try with herbs first. The herbs are the most easiest. And then you can venture on, even chilies are very good. Um, so then you can venture on to um, some other uh, uh, vegetables. Alternative for broccoli, you can use cauliflower. You can avoid broccoli, um, but the broccoli gives a very nice uh, creaminess. You can avoid broccoli, use only peas and make a pea, pea soup as well. If broccoli is not a seasonal vegetable, right, like I said, cab cabbage, cauliflower are very common over here. So you can use those instead. Um, please make next session on protein meals. Well, we'll keep that in mind. Um, uh, can people with thyroid, with thyroid take? Yes, people with thyroid can take any of these uh, because these are in cooked form. The broccoli is cooked, the spinach is cooked, and the amount is not so much as to impair the uh, thyroid glands. Can more day chocolate be used for dessert? More day dark chocolate can be used. Um, but if you are on the weight loss wagon, uh, then probably 70% cocoa chocolate would give you better results. Uh, thank you very much again for those of you who have said they enjoyed the session. It's a pleasure. Uh, uh, olive oil is not local. Well, olive oil is definitely not local. I use olive oil for stir fries, for salads, because the benefits of olive oil for salads is something that I love. And I love the taste of olive oil. We do get good olive oil. Um, but yes, you can use ghee instead, coconut oil instead. Um, and uh, in winters, I think it's more about sesame oil. So in fact, the oil that I used is sesame oil, uh, which I typically use in winters, mustard oil, sesame oil, which are more warming oils. So as per the season, you, you can even keep changing your oils as well. Um, what is the difference between hunkered Greek yogurt? I think I already told that it's probably the same hunkered is just that it is thick. It is not um, 
uh, hunkered is uh, and the original difference is greek yogurt was made from sheep uh, sheep's milk that is why it had a different name and a different uh, taste to it but now probably what we do is it's predominantly the same greek yogurt is just churned and it's very smooth in texture as compared to hunkered um i wish to know where we can add radish it's a seasonal impact radish i think i love it personally i love it in eating it raw but radishes taste great as pickles as well so you can pickle your radishes um you can use radishes in salad like in this kebab you can make this kebab and eat with a side of radish to which lemon salt and some chaat masala it goes really well so something crunchy with something soft it pairs really well um radish uh, sabzi also you can make radish parathas you can make um you can make uh, pickles uh, there are multiple ways that you can consume um i think recipes we have shared again uh, can kala chana be substituted for rajma absolutely any pulses can be substituted um uh can't wait to try the mousse yes please do try it it does taste heavenly um please suggest a dairy free alternative so instead of greek yogurt you can use any of the nut yogurts instead or you can use cashews you can um soak cashews overnight and you can grind it and use that instead or the best alternative is a uh, silken tofu it will give you the same texture that the greek yogurt has given um i have read that air fry is bad for health it can cause cancer i think you know what they say the same for microwave they same say the same for multiple things if used for shorter periods of time i think all of these can be a boon you don't burn your vegetable to the point that it causes nitrite formation which is which can lead to cancer but if it is used just to cook the food um to uh, to a certain extent and don't cook it for a very long time i think it is absolutely okay to have uh please recommend honey brand most of them are filled with sugar uh, when you buy honey um you have to look out for the ingredients uh, so for most of the sugar rich foods uh, where you don't know how much sugar is there look at the ingredient list it should not have any sugar the additive it should say only unpasteurized or raw honey that's about it and uh i think the best one i have found so far is under the mango tree uh, which is pure honey which is sourced directly from the farmer so any of the local markets farmers market nearby your place go there and get it from a local vend farmer who sourced it locally those are the honeys that you can use definitely not from your supermarket shelves um and when you look at the honey bottle right it should not be transparent like a sugar syrup so if it is very transparent and glossy like a sugar syrup it's a it's an indicator that it's probably not pure pure honey will be opaque uh, pure honey will not be very sweet and it will also um, many of the honeys the raw honeys will freeze or become solid in the uh, winter season uh in beet carrot kebab can one add millet flour instead of besan yes you can but definitely try to roast it and add it so that that kachcha pan is not there uh so you can add a roasted jowar flour you can add roasted jow flour or the barley sattu you can add oats flour um or you can add in uh, oats as well wheat flour i don't suggest to add because wheat flour will make it little uh, the texture personally and the flavor in raw kebabs because we are not cooking the kebabs a lot we are not frying it so the wheat may not get cooked and it may uh, cause indigestion so you would use those flours which you can uh, which doesn't need a lot of cooking like besan which is roasted or the putana uh, or the chana the, uh, the ch chutney dal you can grind that and add it oats you can add it you can add moong flour again roasted and add it these are absolutely okay uh um do you have any instagram to follow i do have an instagram by my name it's alpa mamaya so you can definitely uh, follow me there um uh, hunkered dip recipe um just take plain hunkered put some lemon juice lemon zest some garlic 
salt and pepper and mix it and that becomes your ankur dip um okay any alternative for orange lemon amla for people having citrus allergy um for vitamin c you don't have to just depend on citrus you can even have colored peppers uh, green chilies um curry leaves guava uh, broccoli green peas uh, any of the green leafy vegetables all these are also great sources of vitamin c kiwi uh, strawberries uh, any of these um, fruits are also uh, you can have the soup is used for coloring rice and salad how uh, i didn't say the soup is used for coloring but what i said was any leafy greens if you find that your family or you or your kids don't like eating like many people don't like the leaves right they don't like eating uh, so in that case you can just grind your palak leaves or batua leaves or in fact methi leaves you don't even have to cook it just wash it and grind it along with ginger garlic some jeera powder just grind it to a paste and make your atta dough with that and then you make it into rotis or parathas no the taste is not at all there but you get the same benefit similarly if you're making a pulao or something you can just pour this in it and it gives the color but it doesn't really add on to the flavor so very uh, appetizing to look at and also a great way to add the greens in your kids diet uh okay uh, can people with thyroid drink the soup yes you can because the broccoli amount is not as much that it can harm plus it is cooked so um kindly arrange session of salads i think we already finished a salad dressing recipe so uh, if you want to um, the salad dressing recipe was um, a mix of herbs i had added uh, coriander i had added basil i had added dill uh, and some paneer and some uh, greek yogurt along with garlic and lemon and um, then grind it together and that's your green goddess dressing uh carrot sweet dishes um carrots are very versatile again you can add it to a lot of recipes uh the easiest healthiest carrot uh, uh, sweet is uh, gajar ka halwa and in fact you can make it a very healthy way um by taking a pressure cooker putting a little bit of ghee add in the carrot pieces just toss it a little add in a little of uh, some dates to it and a little bit of milk and then pressure cook it for two whistles then mash it add in a little bit of jaggery and some paneer and cook it instead of khoya instead of cream you just make it this way it tastes great and it is extremely healthy uh, so that's a great carrot recipe you can make carrot kheer also um and then you can make uh, uh oats with carrots you can make oats and carrot cake or a carrot cake there are a lot of things you can make with carrots uh okay um okay greek yogurt recipe i think we have shared the recipe um strawberry and broccoli is not seasonal here uh, like i said um in the desert if you're not getting strawberries use whatever fruit is seasonal it doesn't have to be strawberries it's just because i am getting strawberries so i used it use whichever fruit which is seasonal instead of broccoli you can just stick to spinach peas and uh, onions and garlic and cook it boil it and you can uh, grind it so even that is fine if you get cauliflower you can use it as a substitute for broccoli uh milk and salt go together well there are a lot of um, as a nutritionist i don't say that they don't go there are a couple of field of thought which say you shouldn't be eating but white pasta there are a lot of dishes where you add palak paneer um so many other dishes dal makhani where you adding cream milk and salt and you absolutely fine eating it right so uh, up to you if you feel you're okay you can use it um where to find the recipes i think we have shared the recipes you can take a screenshot and you can definitely uh, go to the youtube channel uh the dark chocolate i used was lint um but you can use uh, any other dark chocolate 
uh, what are the benefits of dark chocolate excellent uh, it has got it is very high in antioxidants um, also very high in magnesium very high in calcium there are a lot of other benefits um, and good for mood uh, it it enhances your mood as well so good for your brain uh, it takes care of your cravings it takes care of your muscle cramps um it is good for your pms so if you are someone who loves sweet i think having a piece of dark chocolate is definitely going to be much more beneficial um uh any substitute for calcium instead of milk yes there are multiple sources of calcium apart from dairy um the one i said today was sesame seeds dry fruits almonds nuts uh, are great sources of calcium green leafy vegetables great sources of calcium broccoli uh, is another great source of calcium uh, so nuts seeds broccoli uh, chana rajma again great sources of calcium so yeah you if you eat a varied diet uh you will get enough calcium that you need for your daily requirement tofu is another great source of uh, calcium as well uh can we add rice flour um, to bind kebabs yes you can uh <clears throat> okay sweet potato to gain weight depending on how much sweet potato you eat but sweet potatoes glycemic index is more it is definitely got good amount of fiber a soluble fiber uh so yes sweet potato is good if combined with other vegetables uh and if you're looking to uh it is also a good source of energy if you're working out as well as you can use it more if you are into heavy intense activity for muscle gain as well so yes um uh you can use the uh, sweet potato for weight gain weight loss as well how to make vegetable stock that is a good question any peels any vegetables that you eat uh, if it is uh, sourced from locally or if it is organic you can just use the peels uh, typically i would put in uh, cabbage leaves um, peels of uh, a carrot uh, some garlic ginger ginger peels in fact when i'm making tea the ginger peels uh, then you can put in potatoes broccoli stems cauliflower stems any vegetables you have you can throw it in a pot let it boil for a couple um, say 30 minutes to 45 minutes and that becomes your vegetable stock so you you can use that stock as a base for soups and trust me if you're making soups like uh, on a daily basis and if you keep a stock at hand it will give a very different flavor to your soups uh, it will be much more tastier and homemade soups will also taste much much better uh is olive oil good for cooking absolutely not only for stir fries or to cook, put it on pastas or uh, just for quick cooking because olive oil is extremely good in the good fats which uh, are there Uh, in the uh, uncooked one or the extra virgin one and if you're not using just if you're using virgin olive oil and want the benefits uh, you would just want to use it for a very short cook it for a short period of time so the best benefits of olive oil are definitely waiting raw but you can cook it for a short period of time and it is also great for heart uh so uh, accordingly you use but if for long indian cooking vegetable oils or ghee are sustain much higher temperatures so you would use that for your cooking as well as mustard oil or sesame oil uh, these are also uh, definitely uh, better uh, sources uh, better for indian cooking um okay so thank you very much everyone and hope uh, you try these recipes um do try them and um the more healthy cooking is definitely tasty a uh, lot of people think that you know um healthy cooking is boring and is only soups and salads and boiled vegetables you can make your soups your salads also tasty by using the right ingredients and the right mix of ingredients um so don't be shy to use different ingredients um try using a lot of variety to get a lot of different profiles of nutrients and to sum it up um as the topic suggests eat in season because it far far benefits you than eating something which you are trying to eat out of season so seasonal local and variety are the three main stays 
of any healthy diet and which is going to give you enough benefits so that you can stay um keep yourself and your family safe so with that uh, i end the session and i will see you again next week uh, again for a cooking session as well as a nutrition session so see you all again next week have a great week stay safe stay healthy